Okay, so I got some new cane from uh, the folks at Mo Bleichner, uh, Marca, uh, which comes from the Var region of France. And I'm interested in trying this cane because the reeds I've tried from them are quite amazing. So I'm going to select uh, uh, several segments and make a, a dozen or so blanks so we can see what they sound like. And I thought I'd just take you through the whole system using the... Uh, the reed making machine here, which has undergone just a few modifications, uh, much improved clamp now for the reed. I have a little piece of black felt uh, that's underneath the uh, um, hose clamp there that touches interfaces with the reed uh, and uh, really holds them down quite nicely and doesn't interfere with the sanding drum when it gets close to the drum, etc. cetera. Uh, so I will... Uh, uh, snip all these little segments together. I picked out four segments here and uh, what's nice about them is that uh, the material is fairly thick. Uh, you see always it's thicker at one end. This is not such a round one here so it'll be strange to cut but let's uh, that'll be an experiment. Um, but the thicker end uh, grows toward the bottom. The thinner end is at the top and uh, um, according to uh, George Cooner, what uh, he believes is that uh, the middle makes the best uh, section for the, uh, um, for the tip of the reed. So what I'm doing here, let me come to my, uh, my reed making toolkit here and pull out a, uh, a micrometer and set it out to 140 millimeters because um, I think the uh, uh, I can get two segments out of each of these. So let's see here, that's uh, right, 12, 13, 14 centimeters, okay, there. So I'm just double checking to make sure, and uh, how do I do this and get it in the image? But yes, these segments are longer than 14 millimeters. So that means besides splitting it into four pieces, I should be able to get two segments out of each so that will be eight reeds out of each, and this means 32 reeds, but there'll be some that'll be lost. Anyhow, so uh, the next step is to soak these for a good 10 minutes, and then let them, um, uh, and then split them using this little guy right here, the splitter. All right. So here's a bowl of water. I'm gonna take these guys, drop them in, and then just take uh, another bowl filled with any junk you might have lying around and put it on top and let them soak. And I let these soak at least a good 10 minutes. It looks like I don't have enough water in there, so I'm going to go get some more water and be right back. Okay, I'm back. There's more water in here. We put our pile of junk on top to hold them under, and I let them soak for a good uh, 10 minutes. So let's just wait 10 minutes here. kidding. 10 minutes is up, so I'm going to uh, remove the items and uh, set them down here. I decided to put my phone in a tripod because I can't hold my hand that still. Um, so I'm going to put this back away in the toolkit. Now, what happens is I take each one of these and split it. So why do I split it while it's wet? Um, because the fiber is able to bend better, I believe. And I believe in splitting before uh, cutting to length uh, because you can pick the best segment. In case, in case this whole segment here has uh, curvy uh, fibers, you can choose the straightest segment of it and give up on getting uh, eight segments out of here. Okay, so here I'm noticing that uh, it's fairly uh, oblong, the hole. I guess I would choose to cut here across and here across so that this segment uh, is contained in one area. So what I do is I line it up. Uh, so if I'm going for that, I'm going to line it up so that this comes here on this part of the blade. 
and I sight down the middle to make sure my blade is centered and then I push and it's so flexible that it doesn't want to shatter apart there we go and there are four segments and we got the thick one by itself there and uh, and there's the other side but at any rate that's what I'm gonna do for all four of them and uh, Oh, this is hideous. Look at this. Okay. It's not representative of all of them, uh, but this guy must have had some weight on it when it was drying. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create the cut so that these uh, tall segments remain by themselves, and I get at least two segments that are good. Uh, so I'm going to put that section there between the blades. So like this. Enter it. I'm looking down through the tube. And hmm, let's move it over just a tad. There. Okay. So, okay, we did okay. We got the, uh, that was the, uh, oblong part there and there we'll see might not make a great read and i do that with all four pieces and then i let them dry overnight and then the next day we'll cut to length and uh and then uh, after that uh, do the planing and uh and sanding so the uh, cane has dried I've sorted some uh, out. These guys are all too thin for me. Uh, they measure about three and a half millimeter in thickness and uh, um, at, the, uh, at the center here. And the problem for me is that I like uh, reeds that are about 3.2 or 3.25 uh, millimeters thick total. And uh, a cane like this will have mostly pith along the center of the, the reed if it's planed uh, that thick. Maybe these can be used uh, later for some um, uh, E-flat reeds or something. Um, also, some of these pieces are kind of what I would call a, a hot mess. You look at the, the warping along here, and uh, you can see uh, how the, the cane is uh, all bent up here. So the strategy will be again cutting in the center this will be the tip and this should be the base uh, i'll probably be able to cut off about that much and then still get two 70 millimeter segments out of here um, and we'll see how it goes so on the reed making machine i'm taking the uh, the shuttle mechanism that normally you know i trace a reed out with and i'm going to flip that back here and notice that aside from the main motor robotic uh, um, uh, milling motor here, there's another DC motor over here uh, that I had bought originally, uh, but it turned out it, it couldn't run anything uh, very square. So I put a circular saw on it over here and then put a, uh, um, a, a linear uh, a slide mechanism here. So that's how I'm going to cut these uh, reeds. So what I do is I'm going to set my micrometer to 70 millimeters and or seven centimeters. Uh, there we go, seven. And just to make sure that I'm gonna have enough. So here, the, because this is also messed up down here, I'm going to take 70 from this end and then 70 from the middle on down, and then hopefully we, we uh, avoid some of this, uh, um, this mess here. So I'm gonna turn the motor on to about nine volts, and I'm just going to clean off the edge because, oh, I forgot to turn on the uh, um, vacuum cleaner, so let me go get that first. Okay. 
So yeah, this uh, foam core thing I constructed here is so that I can hold a vacuum cleaner uh, next to an area where I'm working. Normally it's over on this side in order to catch the dust flying off the wheel while I'm making reeds, but it also serves to catch the dust here. So I'm gonna set down this guy, turn this guy on. And then you won't hear me probably. Let's again, turn on the vacuum. That mark there gives me a 70 millimeter length. So now here's that segment that had uh, an ugly foot on it. Let me turn off the, this guy so I don't cut my finger off while I'm not paying attention. And we got rid of the bulk of this bad part here. And this is the part that we're going to be using. So I'm going to do that with all the rest of the pieces. One thing which I forgot to say is that I mark the uh, center of the uh, the cane, the center of the segment. So in other words, the segment went from down here to up here. And I want this to be the tip. So I'm going to just put a little black Sharpie on there. The other way you can tell is that the cane gets thinner uh, as it gets taller. So the thicker part is the base of the cane. The thinner part is the top of the cane. So that's there. And now this... This is again the funky base part, uh, bottom part that I'm going to get rid of and the part I'm going to save is here. So this is going to be the tip of the reed. So I mark that. Okay, and uh, so I've cut uh, this many segments and uh, we had one casualty uh, that got sucked into the vacuum. Uh, but all of these are uh, a little larger than uh, four millimeters, which is good uh, in fact. Closer, yeah, 4.4 uh, 4, 4 millimeters plus. So uh, um, uh, next I will soak these and then plane them. Uh, before I soak them, I'm just going to uh, cut them down a little bit just to uh, make the planing job go faster. And what I mean by that is taking a knife and uh, um, addressing these, these uh, edges here. Uh, which, you know, when you're planing, it takes forever to get through that part. But with a whittling knife, you can just whack, 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 and uh, whack, 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 and, and get rid of it. Let me see if I can just show it. It doesn't seem like I have a, a knife available. Well, here's a, uh, a, oh, here's a whittling knife here. Okay. Um, so what I mean is I'm going to take this and just cut off these edges. So that's what I do by hand and uh, turn it around and do the same thing here. And it just makes planing the reed that much faster. And you'll see what I'm talking about later. Okay, so here's my reed working platform. This this uh, cutting board uh, I found, which is nice because it has a lip down here so that uh, it hooks on the edge of the table. So when I'm planing, uh, it won't move on me. These are my diamond plates that I use for uh, sanding coarse, medium, and uh, fine. And um, the trick here is, uh, okay, so I'm soaking the blanks before I'm going to plane, plane them, and I soak them for about five minutes. The trick is getting the right depth of adjustment of the plane and the right height of the support for the reed so that you're shaving off super thin segments when you plane, uh, but uh, you get to the correct thickness, final thickness of, of 3.25 millimeters. 
uh, which I then sand down to 3.2 millimeters uh, using these uh, blocks in a separate operation. Uh, I plane them. I plane the segments uh, after they uh, are, are wiped dry, and then uh, uh, plane them, and I let them sit. And then the next day, I soak them and sand them. So now we're up to uh, um, uh, two wet dry cycles right now. Positioning the reed here is a little uh, um, tricky. Uh, just because the you know you have no idea when you split the reed how uh, at what angle these walls are going to be at so it's not like you want these walls to be at the same height you want the center of the reed uh, to be centered in the middle of the uh, the center of the the concavity uh, to be in the middle uh, of the uh, uh, of the holder okay a couple of things. Uh, I do take uh, just a little bit of oil. Uh, I think this came with some used clarinet I bought uh, for fun. And uh, I just tap it a, a little bit in these rails here, just a little bit, uh, just to help uh, uh, things slide along a little easier. And uh, I advance this guy by quarter turns uh, so until I get a bite. So here's my first bite. And that seems... A little thick to me so I'm just going to back off by an eighth of a turn so I loosen the tightening thing here and I loosen this guy there's some hysteresis so you have to come back further than you think well nothing's coming off now so I came back too far and I'm gonna go a little bit Still nothing. Listen. Come a little bit. Okay, let's see what happens here. So plane the reed all the way until nothing else comes off. These are pretty thin shavings, so that's good. Find the beginning, then I push down hard to keep the blade engaged. There we go. Uh, now I'm going to release it and we'll measure it. And oh, let's see where zero is first. All right, so that's the millimeter scale, this needle here. And uh, is that right? No, yes, that's the blackest millimeter. So it's at zero. So there is three. I'm going to open it up. Okay, it's about 3.4. That's pretty good. Uh, it'll take me a while to sand from 0.4 down to 0.2. So what I'm going to do is loosen all of these one, two, three, four and then slide the block uh, uh, just so that it's a teeny bit higher. So I loosened these guys about uh, a half a turn each. And then there's a block under here that I slid back this way to lift the entire thing up a, a tenth of a millimeter or so. And then I tighten them back down. And uh, now we're uh, uh, coming in right at 3.25. Uh, approximately. So again, I'm going to see that the center is lined up there. We'll go ahead and do another one. This reed is, this piece of cane is a little bit thin walled, but let's see how it goes. If you take too much cane off each time you slide the plane, you are at risk of tearing the cane tissue. I thought for a while that meant that the, uh, yeah, see this piece is too thin. There's still pith left there and there's no more wood coming off. So this, this is a discard. Or I could uh, use a, a Van Doren, uh, um, a regular Van Doren blue box reed uh, for something like this. But anyhow, you see that we're, we're at 3.2 uh, 3 plus here. Um, so this guy I'm going to set aside along with the uh, thin-walled stuff 
and I'll keep going and uh, we'll see how many blanks we end up with at the end of this. Here's a, a, a blank that um, measures a little thick. Well, let's see, does it really? Yeah, 2.3 uh, millimeters instead of, excuse me, 3.23 instead of 3.25. So I'm going to put it back in uh, to see if I can uh, uh, get one more uh, zip out of it. And I just wanted to show you how to do that because you don't want to have part of it plain like this and part of it plain like that. So what I do is I put the plane on there to get it square with its previous setting. And so then I'm really not getting any grip. So maybe I'm going to just increase the depth of the blade a teeny bit. Screw that in just a bit. No purchase. Let's try it again. Ooh, a little too far, but okay, I'll use it. I'm going to back off on the plane. That was just that one particular blank. So I'll back off a little bit. First of all, you know what? Before I loosen, I'm going to find out where it stops. There it stops. Okay. Loosen, come back just about an eighth of a turn, if a little less. Yeah, you can tell that was a little thick. I'm done. Uh, I've got uh, about 16, maybe, uh, blanks out of this. I mean, some of these are uh, uh, questionable. This one looks like it may uh, have to uh, sh um, be too thin just because I'm not able to get plain down enough. Uh, so pretty disappointing because I would say there's 16 blanks worth over here, which were not usable for my thickness preference. So that's the first time that's happened to me uh, from a commercial cane supplier. Uh, but it could be I drew the uh, a bad lot. So uh, um, a bunch out of the box. But uh, let's see in the future. Um, I am uh, saving these shavings because they make great packing material when I work on mouthpieces for people. I uh, use this as uh, packing material. And uh, so I save this stuff. Um, so tomorrow we're going to soak these blanks and, uh, sand them down and then, uh, plane them, shape them, just shape the sides and, uh, they'll be ready for, uh, for use. It's the next day and I've got, uh, four blanks soaking here. I'll soak them for about three or four minutes. Uh, and by the way, uh, it appears with, uh, homemade reeds, I know people have all this, uh, uh, issue about soaking reeds for too long or they get waterlogged or anything. But uh, uh, once you're using cane like this and, and it's been uh, um, processed three or four times through water while you're manufacturing them, um, it appears uh, it not really to be affected by uh, soaking in water. As a matter of fact, they hardly take in any water. So I'm going to zoom over here so you see. This, by the way, is my sanding uh, uh, jig that I made. Uh, I put a little uh, tubular handle on it here so that I can hold it more easily. But basically, um, this is this 80-20 stuff, which is grown-up uh, erector set stuff. Uh, and I put a couple of pieces of silicone here and uh, two pieces of uh, Delrin uh, on the end so that the reed won't slide back and forth. And it, it captures the reed uh, blank so that I can sand it on the, uh, um, on the stone. So I'm going to move over here a little bit so you see what's going on. What I do is I pre-wet the stone by just dropping a little water on it, both of them. Uh, I used to go all the way to this super fine, but I, I don't uh, uh, do super fine much anymore. Um, and um, um, Larry Guy seems to think that it makes reeds too bright sounding. And so I'm testing that theory out by only going to the, uh, the medium. This is about 125 grit. That's about, uh, I think, about 300 grit, something like this. Um, so I zero my micrometer. I'm going to measure the thickness of the blank. Uh, this one is 3.4. 
and I want to go all the way down to 3.2. So this is going to take a fair amount of sanding, this one here. Uh, so what I do is I do circular pattern clockwise. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I finish with a linear stroke because that's what George Cooner says is the safest to keep a reed flat. I don't know. I turn it around. And I do it again. Okay, now I'm going to move over to the, uh, the finer grit here and do the same thing. One, two, three. If I could count and talk at the same time, I, I would, but uh, I can't. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I, I turn it around again. And the idea is you just average out. If you've got some bias the way you sand when you're doing clockwise, then hopefully it's reversed by the counterclockwise and then ditto by reversing the read. Uh, so... Fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 14, 15, 16. Okay, now let's see what it measures. So I'm going to rinse it, and then I'm going to measure it again. Ooh, we went a little far. It's below, it's 3.1. Okay, so next time I'm going to do 12 uh, when I have one that that's, that's that big, and it should do it less. Okay, so the other step I wanted to show you was uh, doing the... Um, um, uh, let me turn on another light here, uh, doing the shaping uh, operation, which I also do while the blank is still um, wet. I only cut when it's wet. Not, not, in the, uh, not when it's dry. Okay, so what do I need for this? This shaper uh, is amazing, and uh, Delutis, uh, Robert Delutis sells these. Oh, oh, that's one for a saxophone. Sorry, bass clarinet. Okay. Here we go. This one is for, so I marked on here where uh, 13 uh, millimeters would be. Um, and uh, what I like to do is make it a little wider uh, because uh, when you're done making the reed, you need to cut it down a little bit. So that's 13 millimeters at the base of the tape. Uh, so I, I set the tip of the reed up there so that I'm a, a little bit more. Uh, this surface is concave. Uh, to accommodate the uh, the reed and the, the black again is where the tip should be. So I put the black uh, right at the end of the tape there. I tighten down here and then I move back and forth to find out where the thing wants to sit as I'm tightening. A little more. Okay, we're in the center there. Then I start tightening this down and I have to loosen this one a little bit. Tighten this one down. You feel where it, I'm going to loosen this a little bit more. Uh, this guy is all the way over here. Okay. And back here. Okay, good. Right. Seems to be there takes a little while practice to learn how to center the reed and the thing. It doesn't look centered physically, but the idea is when you make the cut, you should uh, see the, uh, the thing looking fairly uh, um, centered. A plain old chisel here. And then what I do is start at the bottom a little bit, just so I don't take too much off at a time. Like so, until nothing more comes off. A little more. 
Hmm. I wonder if I had this thing centered. Seems like we're taking a lot more off here, but let's see. Uh, no, that looks just about right. That's a fairly, uh, let's see how close I can get this for you guys. Um, so that blank is ready to go. And uh, what I do before I use it is I'll uh, shave off the bark up at the top, but I'll show you that when I'm actually making the reed. But that's uh, essentially a blank and it takes a fair amount of time. These things are much more valuable uh, at this point. Uh, so, because they take so much time, uh, the actual cutting on the, uh, on the reed machine doesn't take much time at all. So tomorrow, before I do cut, I will, uh, polish lightly on the, uh, uh, on the, the fine stone. Um, but I will let this dry first, um, uh, because it's been cut and sanded and it will change its shape just a teeny bit. And by the time we make the reed, it will be totally stable. And uh, um, it's amazing when you wet them, take them out of the reed holder and wet them, there's no warping or anything. They just go right on the mouthpiece and start playing. Okay. Here's the battlefield after uh, about an hour. Uh, we got uh, a good uh, uh, 16, and it looks like we're losing one soldier here who had a, uh, a bark impingement uh, right about where the... Um, shoulder of the reed would be. So I'll use that one as the first uh, first try on the machine just to set uh, uh, thickness and all that kind of stuff. But anyhow, uh, these things last, oh, I'd say six months for four of them. So uh, this is a, a year and a half supply if all of them uh, pan out, but they don't typically, maybe 75% work. Um, and um, but as you can see, each step I do wet uh, because the reed is wet when you play it and uh, you want all the fibers in their expanded state when you're sanding them uh, to their final dimensions or cutting them to their final dimensions. The only thing I don't do wet is the final grinding on the uh, uh, sanding drum uh, to get the contour. Uh, because that fills up the sandpaper and uh, also uh, the reed ends up uh, a little too thin because uh, when the fibers shrink back down when it dries up, the entire dimension of the reed will become smaller. So uh, the blanks have, uh, have uh, been sitting for a couple of days. What I did was I colored the end of them all orange so that I would recognize them from the various other types of wood I have. These, remember, are the Marca uh, blanks. And um, I don't know why it's not focusing. There we go. And so what I'm going to do now is I do a, uh, a prep uh, before uh, doing the um, putting them on the machine. Um, and you see the end here that I've marked uh, to be the tip. And the other end is the butt that's the colored end there. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, reach into my uh, uh, junk uh, drawer collection here and pick an old mouthpiece that uh, I can use to carve these on. Um, I'm just looking around here. Uh, what's this? This piece of junk here it says, what's it say? Shed M. Cheville. I can't run. I can't read it. Anyhow, it's too small for me. But anyhow, this looks good. So I'm going to put this on onto a mouthpiece, and then uh, we'll mount the. I mean, onto a barrel, and uh, we'll mount the reed on there, like so. And I use actually an old uh, uh, bay uh, mouthpiece uh, ligature because that grips like hell. By the way, if you're ever switching very fast between B flat and A in an orchestra, that's the one to use. The vamp of a mouthpiece, of course, is supposed to be 32 millimeters. So I'm going to set this to 32 right there. Okay. And tighten it up. And then what I do is I overlap at the tip and then I scrape the bark with the other end. And that gives me a line that I can use to cut with. So now I'll, uh, I'll use that. I'm going to try to reposition this so you can see what I do. 
Um, here is a waste basket. Here is my reed. Uh, and this is a knife I made out of an old uh, straight razor. You can buy these in old uh, barn sales and stuff like that, typically for six bucks. Uh, the downside is the metal is so highly tempered that it's super brittle. Uh, but if you grind it like I did uh, uh, way down uh, so that you get a slightly sharper angle, uh, you can see that I just laid the thing flat and then ground it. Uh, it becomes uh, super sharp and holds its edge. And so what I do, hopefully this will, I'm just trying to see it this, yeah. Um, start at the, at the scrape mark, which is here and remove the bark. And the reason you do this is to save your sandpaper that's on your cutting uh, machine, whether it's a, a redo all or your own machine or even a machine that does planing. And then I take a few cuts. So I come down the middle, start in the middle, come down again, start in the last end, come down again. So I'm just sort of removing a bulk of the wood here uh, so that um, there's not as much to do while you're sanding. Um, and you can see, I'll take it off in a sec. And let me do this. Like so. So you can see, it's just cut at a slight angle. Not a lot. The sandpaper is going to take a lot off. And then the other thing I do is uh, put it on the, uh, the fine grit stone. Here I happen to have some other stone that I use for mouthpiece facing work that happen to be on the bench. Uh, but uh, I would take the reed, let me tip this up, and here's on the bench. And I would just take this and wet my fingers. And just make sure the bottom is flat and uh, not much at all, just a little bit of sanding. And um, that's it. Next, we'll go to the machine. Okay, it's uh, warm enough with the, with the jacket on, I can do this outside. So I've got my pre-carved uh, uh, reed here. And uh, those of you who have seen this machine before, you'll see I've changed my reed holders to uh, hose clamps with a piece of uh, felt underneath, self-adhesive felt. And I put these uh, screws on thinking that uh, these things are designed to go around a circle. So uh, a sharp bend at 90 degrees probably wouldn't be the easiest way for them to tighten up. So I put them like this. Um, I have measured uh, the distance uh, uh, between uh, these two guys uh, using what I do is I put a reed blank here and I put a, uh, um, a used, you know, reed that I'm going to throw away up here. And uh, I have the end of the blank, so let's say somewhere like this, and I run it and I see where that step occurs on the uh, piece of junk. And then I measure the distance there. And that's how I know the distance between here and here. Uh, I can show you that someday. All right, so I've measured it at 98 millimeters, which is what I've got here. I was, so I always add just about an extra millimeter uh, just to, to be safe. And that's, uh, that's good there. So I'm gonna tighten it up. And what I do is just make sure I'm centered, sort of like this one is. By the way, you'll notice my model it has a chipped corner and I thought, oh crap, but uh, it's no worry because I use guardrails. Uh, these guys are five mil uh, shim stock. You can buy plastic shim stock at places like McMaster Car or Small Tools. And uh, um, whenever you're using a sanding type arrangement where you're rocking, uh, you can't control how thick the edge is uh, when you're on an angle. Uh, so I put this here so that I guarantee that the tip will never get less than uh, um, uh, seven uh, uh, or five ml. Sorry, um, at the uh, at the square tip, um, which when you cut back, usually ends up around seven ml. Okay, I'm going to plug it in and we're going to grind it. So I'm now back to using around nine volts. I found that uh, running it a little slower is better. Uh, I start at the heel here, and then I run it this way, and I'm pulling only 
until I get the major part of the wood off. And I roll it and allow it to follow the contour. And I'm only pressing down right here, as you should even with a reed do all, only press down at the, uh, at the follower. I call these things the followers. They follow the contour of the master. Now I'm just gonna go across the tip and I'm rolling each time I come off of the tip. And there we are. So I take it off and let's see what it looks like. And then I'll go ahead and do the rest. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna turn this to the light. Okay, nice fall day. Okay, so the heart comes up quite a bit. That's good. I always cut them a little thicker than uh, than I want them because uh, the heart uh, uh, the heart is what um, what you want coming up to the tip. Okay. Now I'm going to do the rest of them, and I'll be back. Here we are. Uh, here are all uh, four of the blanks, and uh, I made a mistake on the last one. I forgot to measure how far away from the, uh, so you can see the vamp is way too long. So this is either going to be a really short read, or we're going to turn it into an E-flat read. Um, but anyhow, uh, what I do first, soak for a good uh, 30 seconds or so. Uh, the tool set I like to use are uh, uh, Markhart uh, 100 180 for roughing in. And then these little uh, pink guys, which are about a 300 grit. Uh, I'm going to do a whole separate uh, um, series on uh, reed adjustments using these because I believe it's way superior to using a knife or anything like that. Um, and uh, anyhow, so the first thing I do is uh, measure the tip and it should be around 10, 10 mil or so. Uh, yeah, 10 mil. Uh, I like to use uh, a five mil thickness, so there'll be a fair amount of uh, um, sanding down, but I'll just show you how I do it. So the first sanding is coarse side, always everything wet, and you see how half of my thing is off over on the glass, and uh, the other part on the reed, I'm never going like this, because then I can't control how, th how uh, the, the, the rate of curvature at the edge but this will guarantee that the rate of curvature is not too extent, extended. So I come here and I'm, so the whole blank is way too thick uh, by design so that I can control the, uh, you know, there's little undulations and stuff like that and you get rid of them uh, by doing this longitudinal sanding. And then across the tip like this I actually you know if you get to seven mil that's maybe a little better but uh, uh, I don't know why it's 10 mil maybe there's too much glue behind my guardrails and I go to the thinner so when you're sanding longitudinally it's like your uh, um, cultivating, you know, soil, you leave long grooves uh, and uh, the finer the uh, um, sandpaper you use, the more you level off the top of those grooves. So you should always finish with the, the finer uh, sandpaper because otherwise you'll have a bunch of dead wood, which are the peaks of the grooves, so to speak, that are running longitudinally. So here's a very fine one and you'll see a whole lot of wood comes up and off. It's not because this little guy is that is removing, you know, uh, that much wood, but there's just that much that's available on the peaks of the troughs between. So now I'm just right at the tip. And then what I'm gonna do, we'll measure again. See where we are, where did I put my thickness gauge? Oh, here, okay. By the way, it's, it's looking kind of nice there. Uh, 
We're down to almost eight. Okay, a fair way to go. So I'm gonna keep going. So we'll go back to the course. I'm rolling to the center as I go to the tip. Roll to the center. Roll to the center. Now I'm just going to focus on the tip area because I don't want to remove too much heart. Uh, the other thing I do, you can make physical measurements, but they only take you so far because the wood is uh, different hardnesses across the, uh, the blank. So you can never really rely on thickness to tell you how hard a reed is going to be. So I'm going to deflect here. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Uh, and we'll just finish with the soft here. And let's see what it sounds like. So we're going to go like this. Finish with this. Okay. I use a soprano uh, um, reed trimmer, which was uh, uh, what Brad Bain recommended, which is a pretty good uh, recommendation. Um, the curve on these is uh, much closer to uh, the curve on the tip of a clarinet mouthpiece. I'm not sure where Cordier got the uh, shape for the uh, B-flat clarinet reed trimmer. I think it's from... Uh, some type of uh, mouthpieces they used to use in the 1800s or something. Anyhow, I'm going to trim off just to, just that much, and I'm going to pull it up so I can see it to center it perfectly. There we go. Centered between that edge and that edge. Go ahead and clip. I hear a teeny snip. You learn uh, uh, what your uh, how thick your tip is by the sound your reed trimmer makes. Um, that sounded to me like a, a maybe five mil plus. So now the next thing I do is, uh, uh, you know, make my, my reeds a little wide uh, because you want to uh, have a rail that's uh, nicely finished and, and stands up nicely. So I'm gonna take uh, one, two, three strikes. One, two, three strikes. And then Let's see what it sounds like to begin with. It's the first try. It's probably going to be too hard, I bet. Let's see. I'm a little high up. Let's come down. feels a little long and soft. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to thin out the tip and trim it back. So I'm going to come here. We'll start with the soft side and the 180 grit. Just the tip, nothing else. The rest of the reed felt pretty balanced and good. In general, when you trim a reed, you should always thin the tip first and then clip. You can go right across the tip with these sanding wands, it doesn't matter. And then uh, when, you, when you clip, you get a nice square edge. So now, blowing out the uh, the old piece of reed that was in there. I'm going to center it down here first and then center it up here. And let's show you how much I'm going to take off. Like that. That's like um, maybe half a millimeter, maybe a millimeter. It was quite long. 
the vamp felt quite long. sit for a day and then tomorrow I'll probably end up thinning the just the tip a little bit um, and uh, because it seems to be fairly well balanced and that's how it goes. Uh, these guys, uh, four of them, will last about six months uh, and uh, you see I've made the unfortunate choice of uh, uh, making a lot of them and, uh, and then I have boxes and boxes of uh, reeds I've made. So I'm 67 and uh, let's see, 16, uh, eight of them a year. Uh, I probably have enough to last until probably 20 years after I'm dead, at least. But highly recommended. Okay, so I've worked uh, all these reeds here. The four that I made, I did not use that uh, one that I cut too long. Instead, uh, strangely enough, the one with the really bad bark on it. Uh, but it plays nicely. Third one. So all of them needed to be shortened, which makes me think that my measurement between the model and the reed to, to be made is wrong. So I'm going to finish this video with uh, exploring that one issue and, and measuring that one aspect. <laughs> Read. <clears throat> so this one I would probably toss. I don't like the, the tone quality. And I'm just looking, and this looks, looks good, but who knows? And this is the one with the really bad uh, um, bark on it, on the side. I like that read the best. Go figure. All right. So there you have it. Uh, at least 75% uh, just uh, doing four reads. Uh, pretty good compared to buying a box. Okay, to find out exactly uh, the distance from where the model should be to the piece I'm carving, I put a model read way up front that was exactly three millimeters thick and a blank that I measured that was three millimeters thick. So the first thing I'm going to do is put it back in this region here and make sure that I just get the paper to pull through. So I'm going to lower my follower bar here and get it. Huh, there we go. It's a little much maybe. There. It's just pulling through now. And what I'll do, without the vacuum, I'm just going to do a little bit 
of until it rides right down this part here and see where it marks there and then we'll get an idea so I'm going to put it on low Okay, so we have a pretty good indication here that it's starting right there. I'm going to get a close-up if I can. And I'll measure that distance and use that and see if that improves the length of my vamps. But I'm not sure it will. Uh, so that is here. Well, that's quite a bit shorter than I was using. It is. That's like nine centimeters. Well, that's curious. Okay, I was using 98 millimeters, 9.8. Well, I'm gonna do another batch of four with a, a nine centimeter spread. Here, by the way, no reeds on at all or blanks. And I put it on the, the section here on the follower. And then I have the adjustments underneath, those micrometer adjustments. So what I'm going to do is put it down on the flat and I put a piece of cigarette paper here and pull it out and I feel the same tension on both sides. And I'm just going to lower each one by a titch. Unit of measurement. There. That's a little tighter. There. A little tighter. So I'm going to come up on that side just a smidge. Slightly less than a titch. Good. Okay. So it's, it's leveled out and ready to go. So I'll put blanks in there and try cutting the four more blanks.